So dear friend, today we will discuss the maxillary art. This is one of the important vascular content of the infratemporal fossa. Maxillary artery, which is a branch of one of the branch of the external carotid artery. And this artery is also known as the internal maxillary artery. Or mandibulo maxillary artery. Mandibulo maxillary artery. This artery, as I told you, one of the two terminal branch of the external carotid artery, and this maxillary artery arises in the substance of the parotid gland, and then this artery passes anteriorly and passes to the infratemporal fossa, first give to the mandible, enters the infratemporal fossa, then enters into the pterygomaxillary fissure, enters into the pterygoplatine fossa. So, according to this, this maxillary artery actually has a three parts. These three parts are, one is the mandibular part, one is the maxillary part, one is the pterygopalatine part. Mandibular part deep to the mandible, neck of the mandible. Maxillary part or the pterygoid part is above the or deep to the lower head of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Okay. And the third part, the pterygopalatine part is inside the pterygopalatine fossa. Now just draw the diagram. Look here. This is the nose. Meters. and this is the next graph this is the next graph one the word for it these are the angular process This is the Okay, here. Yeah. This is the mandible. Here, yeah. somewhere near the mandible. So this is a rough picture of the skull, lateral side of the skull, you see, lateral side of the skull. And this is the, here the pterygomaxillary fissure, this one, this is the pterygomaxillary fissure here. And this pterygomaxillary fissure opens into the pterygopalatine fossa. Now what are the, this part of the artery, okay, look here. This artery arises in the substance of the parotid gland, here in this region, you know, 
is a parotid gland is there. Okay, so this artery arises here. This is the first part of the artery. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is the muscle, the upper head of the uh, lateral pterygoid muscle. This is the lower head of the lateral pterygoid muscle. This artery passes medial to the first, the neck of the mandible towards the uh, lower border of the lateral pterygoid muscle. Yeah. So this is the first part. Second part of the artery either passes superficial to the lower head of the lateral pterygoid muscle or deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle, whatever. Okay, here yeah, two cases here. Yeah. Either superficial or the deep. And then reaches towards the here yeah, between the two head. Okay. And between the two head here, it reaches now towards the pterygomaxillary fissure here. Okay. Yeah. This area is the pterygomaxillary fissure. Yeah. And for this pterygomaxillary fissure here, it enters into the pterygopalatine fossa here. So, this is the first part of the artery, this is the second part of the artery, and this is the here, this is the third part of the artery. So, yeah, so this is the Three, these are the three parts of the maxillary artery. Now, what are the branches of the maxillary artery? Branches of the maxillary artery, there are total five branches come from the first part, four branches come from the second part, six branches come from the third part. Now, what are the, these branches? Branches of the first part and the second part, they are correspond with the branches of the mandibular nerve. Okay? And the branches from the third part, they correspond with the branches of the maxillary nerve and the pterygopalatine ganglia. And now, the branches of the second part are the muscular branches. While the branches from the first part and the third part, they are the enter into one of the foramina of the skull and supply the nearby structure. Clear? Now, what are the branches of the first part? Look here. Branches of the first part are here. First is the this is the deep auricular artery here. This deep auricular artery here passes through the foramina. Also, it enters through the bony of the cartilaginous part of the external posterior meatus and enters into external meatus and supply the skin of the external posterior meatus and the tympanic membrane. So, this is the first branch here, the deep auricular artery. Second branch of this uh, maxillary artery, the first part is of the maxillary artery is the, the second branch passes inferiorly, this is the anterior tympanic artery, this is the anterior tympanic artery passes through the petrotympanic tympanic fissure here, enters into the middle ear cavity and supply the mucous membrane of the medial side of the tympanic membrane, okay. So this is the anterior tympanic artery, the second branch passes through the petrotympanic tympanic fissure. Third artery the, of the first part is the, is the upper part here. This is the most important branch here, is the middle meningeal artery. This middle meningeal artery ascends upward, deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle, bounded by the two roots of the auricular temporal nerve. This one, okay, this two roots of the auricular temporal nerve ascends upward here and passes through the foramen spinosum, enters into the middle cranial fossa, then this artery passes laterally, okay, forward and laterally here, runs in the groove here, okay, on the lateral, in the, in the floor of the middle cranial fossa, in the ischemous parts of the peripheral bone, runs laterally, ascends upward here, and then divide into the two branches, anterior branch, frontal branch, posterior branch, parietal branch. This frontal branch here, Further passes anteriorly, okay, here, just close to the, this ischemous part of the temporal bone, ascends upward, just parallel to or anterior to the central sulcus of the brain, outside the dura mater, between the dura mater and the bone, okay, ascends upward here and divide into that. When it ascends upward here, 
it is very closely related to the terion here okay it is deep to the terion it reaches anteriorly here it is very close to the terion so it's when this uh, skull fracture occur on the lateral side the blow occur the fracture occur here this art is most likely to injure and hematoma occur deep to the terion okay here so this area here is a cortical the motor cortex area anterior anterior to the central sulcus here so what's happen now with the hematoma occur this hematoma compresses the motor area of the brain and the paralysis of the opposite side of the body occur when this hematoma is not evacuated or the drain so the neurosurgeon drain this hematoma for the sterion the neurosurgeon enters into the cranial cavity and drain the hematoma so this is the anterior branch frontal branch posterior branch passes posteriorly here okay towards the parietal region and then supply the dura uh, mater and the bone of the parietal region and as well as the posterior cranial fossa so this is the third branch of the first part of medullary artery fourth branch is here this is the accessory meningeal artery this accessory meningeal artery passes through the foramen oval runs in the middle cranial fossa and supply the here the meninges meninges of the middle cranial fossa or the dura mater of the middle cranial fossa then the this is the fourth artery the fifth artery is the this is the inferior alveolar artery this inferior alveolar artery here runs downward just close to the ramus of the mandible here it passes between the ramus of the mandible and the sphenomandibular ligament this is the sphenomandibular ligament here okay which come from the spine of the sphenoid and attach to the lingula of the mandibular foramen here this is the lingula the bony chip here where the sphenomandibular ligament is attached so this artery passes between the sphenomandibular ligament ramus of the mandible here Uh, superficial to the lateral pterygoid muscle here and then enters into the pterygo this mandibular fossa and runs into the mandibular canal and in the posterior side here it supply the branches to the molar and the premolar tooth in the pulp space further goes anteriorly give rise to the incisive branch this is the incisive branch here we supply the incisor teeth and the canine teeth and the further this branch comes out for the mental foramen okay yeah, this is the mental foramen and for the mental foramen this artery comes out here and this then supply the skin of the mentum and the chin here so this is the area now before it enters into the mandibular foramen it gives to the one branch the mylohyoid branch here okay this this mylohyoid branch which pierces the here the sphenomandibular ligament run below the mylohyoid groove In the mylohyoid line, and then passes for the superficial surface of the mylohyoid muscle, and then supply the muscle mylohyoid muscle. And this uh, mylohyoid branch runs with the nerve to mylohyoid, okay, which is again come from the inferior alveolar nerve. So this is the here yeah, nerve to mylohyoid. Yeah. So this is the fifth branch of the first part of the maxillary artery. Now, what are the branches in the second part? second branch second part give us to the muscular branch the four branches come from the second part or the pterygoid part here this pterygoid part i already told you it passes either the superficial to the lower head of the lateral pterygoid muscle or either the deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle it reaches to other pterygo maxillary fissure so this is the second part and this second part give us to the first it give us to the two branches the deep temporal arteries Okay. which reaches in the temporal fossa just due to the temporalis muscle between the temporalis muscle and the here the bone the skull bone and supply the here the temporalis muscle here the first artery the tem deep temporal artery second artery is the this is the mesenteric artery this is the mesenteric artery here this one this mesenteric artery comes from the deep surface of the This is uh, a terrible little terrigoid muscle here. Ascends upward, emerges from the upper border of the upper uh, head of the little terrigoid muscle, reaches towards the mandibular notch here. It reaches towards like this mandibular notch here and supplies the mesenteric muscle and the joint, the TM joint. For this here, the deep surface of the mesenteric muscle. So this is the mesenteric artery and the uh, this third artery is here. 
This is the perigoid artery. Perigoid artery, we supply the lateral perigoid muscle and the middle perigoid muscle here. So, this is the, these are the perigoid arteries. We supply the perigoid muscle, middle is the perigoid muscle here. And the fourth artery is the buccal artery here. This buccal artery descends downward along the buccal nerve, reaches towards the buccinator muscle and supply the buccinator muscle. So these are the four branches, the muscular branches come from the second part of the maxillary artery. First is the deep temporal artery, two branches come, mesotric artery, in the pterygoid branches through the lateral pterygoid muscle, middle pterygoid muscle, the buccal branch will descend downward along the buccal nerve, here is the buccinator muscle, supply the buccinator. So these are the branches from the second part. Now what are the branches from the third part here? Third part, the branches come, they are the six in number. Okay, what about these six in number branches here? First, when this artery passes, enters into the pterygomaxillary fissure, it gives to the first, the posterior superior alveolar artery here. This is the posterior superior alveolar artery, which enters into the foramina on the posterior surface of the maxilla bone here. These are the foramina of the posterior surface of the maxilla bone here. So this is the posterior superior artery, which supply the pulp space of the molar and the premolar tooth of the upper alveolar arches here. Okay, so this is the posterior maxillary or posterior superior alveolar branches. Then when this artery further passes anteriorly here, it gives rise to the infraorbital artery here. This is the infraorbital artery here. This infraorbital artery first passes through the infraorbital groove, then the infraorbital canal here. It passes the infraorbital canal and then come to the infraorbital foramina. It comes outside the isca and here. This is the infraorbital foramina here, foramen, and it comes out to the infraorbital foramen and then supply the skin of the lower lid, lateral side of the uh, nose, upper lip, and the cheek region here. So this is the, so before now when, when this infraorbital artery, infraorbital canal, it gives rise to the anterior superior alveolar artery and the middle superior alveolar artery. And this anterior superior alveolar artery and the middle superior alveolar artery supply the branches for the premolar tooth, incisor tooth, and the canine tooth. Okay, so these are the uh, middle and the anterior superior alveolar artery. So this is all about the infraorbital artery. Then the third branch, third branch of this artery come on the this side. This is the pharyngeal branch. Okay, pharyngeal branch. This pharyngeal branch passes through the palatovaginal canal here. It passes through the palatovaginal canal. Yes. Okay, it enters with the palatovaginal canal in the base of the skull. You will study and enters posteriorly and supply the nasopharynx. And the auditory tube. These are pharynx and the auditory tubes here, posterior here. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the pharyngeal artery here. Then the next artery is the artery of the pterygoid canal here. This artery again here comes from the pterygoid and fossa and enters the pterygoid canal here. Okay, it enters the pterygoid canal and then enters posteriorly and supply the here again the nasopharynx. Here and the uh, sphenoidal air sinus, okay, sphenoidal air sinus uh, and the uh, pharynx, okay, here. So this is the artery of the pterygoid canal here, okay. Then another artery come from the lower side is the greater palatine artery here. This greater palatine artery comes here, passes through the greater palatine canal here. Okay, here between the maxilla bone and the pterygoid bone here. So pterygoid, this is the greater uh, palatine canal here and this greater palatine canal here, the greater palatine artery passes then comes out in the, between the pterygoid bone 
and the palatine bone. Here the foramina, the pterygo palatine foramina, greater pterygo greater uh, palatine foramina. And so the greater palatine foramina, this artery comes out and runs by the side of the alveolar arch here, superior alveolar arch here. So this artery passes to the superior alveolar arch and reaches for the anteriorly here. Okay, and anteriorly there is a one foramina there. This is the incisive foramina which runs to the incisive canal here. Okay, here. Incisive foramina here. Okay, here. Here. And this, for this artery, this incisive canal, sorry, incisive canal, this artery runs and enters into the nasal cavity here. And then anastomos with the sphenopalatine artery. We will see the sphenopalatine artery comes, enters into the nasal cavity here. So, this is a greater palatine artery after coming of the greater palatine foramina passes through the side of the superior arch near the gum and this artery supplies the here. Okay, this artery supplies the uh, mucous membrane of the heart palate and the gum. Okay, this is anteriorly as a as sense of the incisive canal and anastomosis the sphenopalatine artery. Now, in the greater palatine canal, this artery also gives the lesser palatine artery. This is a lesser palatine artery. This lesser palatine artery comes out of the lesser palatine foramina, passes posteriorly here, okay, towards the soft palate here, and supply the here the muscles and the mucous membrane of the soft palate in this region. Okay. So this is the lesser palatine artery here. So this is the fifth branch, the greater palatine artery. Now the last branch, this is a continuation of the maxillary artery that is the sphenopalatine artery. This sphenopalatine artery passes inside the nasal cavity towards the territory in the region of the superior meatus here. Okay, here is a foramina, the sphenopalatine foramina which opens into the pterygopalatine fossa. So this is the pterygopalatine fossa is the opening of the sphenopalatine foramina and for the sphenopalatine foramina, suppose this is the sphenopalatine foramina here, here, it enters into the into the nasal cavity in the territory of superior meatus. Okay, and in the superior meatus, this artery now divided into the posterior lateral nasal branches and the posterior septal branches here, and the superior branches, okay? Posterior lateral nasal branch and posterior superior nasal branch here. So posterior lateral nasal branch supply the mucous membrane of the lateral valve of the nose, okay, here. And the posterior medial or the septal branches here runs through the, here, the vomer bone, okay, here, and the crest of the sphenoid bone, and runs to a canal here in the between the vomer and the sphenoid bone and reaches towards the lower part of the septum and then anastomos with the here the greater palatine artery and this artery during its uh, runs through the uh, septum it supplies the mucous membrane of the septum like this okay so this is the sphenopalatine artery and this sphenopalatine artery enters into the nasal cavity so the sphenopalatine foramina and divided into the posterior lateral nasal branches and the posterior medial septal branches here and supply the lateral valve of the nose and the half side of the septum here. So this is all about the maxillary artery. Thank you.